Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and we are here with this week's Hunter Hunter review and breakdown. We've got a lot to talk about because they crammed so much into these three episodes, and I'm ready to just jump in. But first, I have to say thank you to the people that watched this series. While there are a few, of the, a few of you that have watched it with me since the very beginning, as of the last couple of weeks, the series has actually shot up a lot in popularity. I know it's not huge in the YouTube world, but we went from, you know, a consistent four or five people that watched every episode to 20 plus people that are joining us just to hear me talk about a series I know most of you have already seen. That being said, I am still the first timer and let's jump in. Episode 119 started off with some hype. Right from the get go, it's just Kila jumping into Godspeed and he beats the ever living shit out of Yubi. Every move he does, as soon as Yubi even flinches, Kilo was already hitting him. He literally can do nothing to Kilo as Kilo just beats the ever living shit out of him and electrocute him with, electrocutes him with almost every hit. We get a nice explanation on Godspeed from the narrator. So Godspeed has two pieces to it: speed of lightning, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is increased movement speed and more control at high speeds for Kilo. And whirlwind. Whirlwind was the part I didn't really know about. So this happened in. A, in a past episode, but I didn't really explain it because honestly, I had totally blanked it out. So when Kilua fought the fish uh, siblings, you know the darts, he caught the last dart by basically flooding his arm with electricity, so that way his reaction time would increase. Obviously, even in real life, electrical signals can only go from the brain to the body so fast. But by using his electric electrical nen, he was able to increase his reaction time by making it so his body would move without conscious thought he basically used ultra instinct before ultra instinct was a thing and in godspeed he floods this through his entire body so as soon as you'd be moved at all with any kind of malicious intent Kilo's body would automatically respond and honestly it was it was dope even even you is like i have no idea what i'm supposed to do right now well it turns out Kilo kind of overestimated himself and burned through his entire godspeed after beating him, I want to say he landed at least 20 hits. He it ran out and he tried to run away. Yuppie chased after him. And by the time Yuppie got to the top of the big ass crater he was sitting in, Kilo was gone thanks to Meliorod. Meliorod was chilling on the side. And as soon as Kilo cleared the, the crater, he grabbed him up and then disappeared. But Yuppie now realizes that somebody has some sort of t teleportation ability. And that whoever somebody has been helping everybody get in and out of the fight. Because they've been swapping through as he's trying to fight everybody. It happened with, it happened with Shoot, though he barely noticed. It happened with Knuckle. And now it happened with Kilua, too. We jump back over to Ikalgo. And Bloster is still stuck in the elevator because he doesn't know about the passwords. And as he punches in a password, it tells him if he puts in another wrong attempt, it's going to lock, he's going to be arrested. Ikalgo gets out of his hiding spot underneath the truck and goes to the, to the camera room to watch Bloster. We also see him, he basically comes up with a plan on how what he's going to do with Bloster. Bloster actually just ends up shooting his way out of the elevator, but because of this, it starts releasing sleeping gas. It turns out Ikago was able to control all this in that monitoring room, and he drops a bunch of bulkhead giant metal doors, and they're too thick for Bloster to shoot through. He tries to trap Bloster, but Bloster actually like uses his, uh, his claw machine guns like rockets, and basically save himself from getting completely trapped. Now, Ikago at first is like, cool, this will work out because he's still in an enclosed space, I just gotta let it fill up with sleeping gas, but then he clicks in his head that he's not actually trapped. There was a way out, and if, if he wanted to stop Bloster, he had to trap him. So, the way for Bloster to get out was the elevator. While yes, there's sleeping gas coming out of the elevator, if he blows a hole into the elevator shaft, he can just climb out of the elevator shaft. So, Ikalgo goes and gets a freaking tank. And he basically goes at Bloster with the tank. Bloster can't shoot through the tank's armor, but he manages to mess up the tracks on it. But it doesn't matter because all Ikalgo was trying to do was block off the elevator so he couldn't get in. 
It was too heavy for Blaster to move, and now Blaster is 100% trapped. Ikago basically uses some, like, I want to say alcohol and a match that he found to light up the inside of the tank so that way it looks like he died. While in reality, he went inside the elevator through a small crack, like maybe that big. Because he's an octopus, they can squeeze into tight spots. And he made like an air, a getaway air tube so that way he can breathe while it filled up with sleeping gas. As soon as Bloster went out, he went right up to Bloster and was trying to talk himself into pulling the trigger. He was going to kill Bloster, take Bloster's body, and go. And if he did that, you know, nobody would second guess it. They would think he's really Bloster. Now he knows about Hagia's other name. It would be a lot harder for him to get caught. But he couldn't bring himself to do it. He ends up running to back to the control room, turns off the smoke, and breaks down because he couldn't bring himself to kill another living being. While he can control dead bodies, he's never actually had to kill somebody. Now... I know I said this oh, super fast, and I kind of condensed it, but that was basically the whole of the episode. Kilua fighting Yubi and then running away. With Knuckle showing up, I almost forgot about that, Knuckle did show up as Kilua and Meliong were leaving. And uh, the whole thing with Blaster and Ecalgo, while I said it fast, there was a lot more explanation of what was going on. Because, you know, there was Ecalgo explaining his whole plan, there was a narrator explaining him not, uh, not wanting to kill Bloster. Blah, blah, blah. But the episode ends by us jumping back over to Moral. And Moral realizes that, you know, between uh, Yuppie yelling in, yelling in, trying to get uh, Poof's attention, the explosion, that Poof hasn't been reacting at all. And he's trying to decide if he should attack the Chrysalis or not. That if he attacks the Chrysalis, will he even be fully formed? Or is it a trap trying to lure him into attack? And he is literally just going back and forth trying to figure it out, trying to argue with himself, and that's when the episode ends. Now, one more caveat real quick. I want to apologize at the, about the quality of the pictures I got up to this point. The website I've been using, I don't know, the quality kind of goes up and goes down. Sometimes I can get really, really good pictures. A lot of times I can't. But I will tell you this. The next two episodes, the quality was on point. Um, the episodes looked great. So we're going to jump into 120 now. 120 starts off with Knuckle trying to find Shu, who is gone. We just see a bunch of his blood, and Knuckle can't figure out where he went, because where would he go in that condition? How could he even move? It jumps over to Moro, and Moro finally decides to smash uh, the cocoon, just to find out that nothing's in it. And as soon as he does, he dispels the smoky jail. We see Poof already on the outside, and Poof decides to try and mess with Moral's mind, uh, we get to see him show off his Beelzebub ability by breaking down, and he can break down his body into up to small, super small particles or a bunch of mini crazy looking poofs. Moral tries to use his deep purple, tries to get them to go after the poofs. Even when they slash through the poofs, they just break down into little particles and he can't, he can't kill them. So he tries to, he uh, he sees them all fly away because they they, he thinks they're all leaving, but he jumps down, he decides he's going to go help Knuckle try and take on Yuppie. Well, Poof attacks him from behind and actually manages to take his pipe and flies away. Well, it turns out Moro can't make any more smoke. He can still control the smoke that he already made, but once the deep purple that he has runs out, that's it, he's done. And I think he said he had 84 soldiers at this point. Right as soon as this happens, Yuppie shows up. And Yuppie's already pissed because of all the bullshit he's had, to, he's had to deal with. So right after Yuppie shows up, <laughs> Knuckle shows up. So Moral decides to support Knuckle by turning all of his deep purples into Knuckle clones. And they all start trying to attack Yuppie. We jump over to Hana and her servant. And they're trying to leave because they, she found out Floyd is dead. The castle's in ruins. She has no way to contact uh, Lael. So there's just, we're just going to get out of here. And then we find out what happened to Beezif. He's still alive, but he's under a bunch of rubble. Turns out the castle kind of fell on him. He basically begs and pleads for them, for uh, Hana to help him. And she finally does, but only after he agrees to give her tr the treasure in the, in the vault. I don't know why treasure matters to a chimera ant, but it is what it is. So... Uh, her servant ends up carrying Bezef, and they all, the three of them just, you know, go off, go off, and go find this vault. 
We see what Poof did with Moro's uh, pipe. He threw it to the bottom of the ocean. And we actually get a whole explanation of how his ability, Be uh, Beelzebub, works. That he can make himself, his parts of him shrink down to basically the microscopic level. Except for his actual main body. His main body can't go any smaller than a bee. Uh, so that was, I would say, like, about that big. Um, and he basically explains that with everything going on, and if Moral had, you know, actually thought about it, he actually could have caught, uh, pe uh, well, he actually could have caught Poof, simply because when he broke the chrysalis, Poof's main body was still in there. Even if he had stayed in there with Poof, Poof could only use so much of his strength with his copy body, I guess you could call it. And his teammates would have known that it would have been able to tell just by how he would have been forced to fight that that wasn't really him. And we also get an explanation from the narrator that obviously Moro wasn't anywhere near 100% when he went into this, even before the fighting started. So exhaustion, you know, panic, the explosions, worrying about his friends, everything just kind of weighed on Moro, and that threw off his game. If he had been at 100%, he probably would have destroyed Poof. At least that's my opinion. We go back over to the fight. Yuppie is literally just tearing through Moro's smoke soldiers. But he's trying to come up with his own plan. He thinks that if he leaves an opening and can lure the real Knuckle in to attack him, that he'll be able to kill the real Knuckle because, you know, he'll feel completely different. So, <laughs> while this is happening, uh, Poof's Beelzebub starts flying around the castle trying to get a tally of everybody. We see, obviously, Pito with Gon. He's trying to figure out what he thinks Gon's there to help Kamugi. He doesn't understand that Pito's doing it by order of the king. We see this! <laughs> This is important. He is just like, this is a cocoon that's about to hatch with the human that they captured inside of it. So my guess is this is Palm. And that is huge to me. Because we have not seen anything about what's going on with her. I thought she was, I already thought she was dead. We also see, you know, he sees Hana, her servant, Bzef all walking away. Turns out uh, Wolfen is actually following them. I guess he's suspicious of them too. But then we go back to the actual fight with Yopi and Moro. Moro tricks Yopi by... Because Yopi leaves an opening expecting Knuckle to attack him. And then uh, Moro has one of the smoke uh, soldiers attack. Yopi kills it. And then Yopi, just, he's just like, yeah, there was never Knuckle was never here in the first place. They were all fakes. And Yopi loses it. Transforms and goes after Moro with like everything. Only for Knuckle to pop out and punch him in the face. They tricked him twice in one shot. Now he falls over and explodes. Poof pulls himself back together and flies to the castle. We jump over and we see Shoot waking up. Wrapped in bandages being worked on by a bunch of doctors. And from what I can tell from the setting, he's inside Noah's four dimensional uh, prison or castle, whatever they call it. Turns out Nob actually saved him. So the episode ends, 120 ends, with us seeing Pito with Gon. And Pito, without Gon saying anything, says, Poof, just stop. Turns out Poof is approaching from the from the hallway. We can hear his footsteps. We didn't know it was him. It could've, I thought it was Kilo. And when he gets there, he just makes a face, and the episode ends. So it leaves us on a little bit of a cliffhanger. What's going to happen with Gon? We jump in to 121, and Pito explains how he couldn't risk, you know, Poof approaching with any kind of bloodlust because Gon could have easily killed Kamugi. And all Pito wants to do is fulfill the king's order. We see Killua charging up his uh, his Nen, and I'm a little confused about Killua and his Nen ability. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. Why does he have to charge up? He's a transmuter. He should be able to transmute his Nen, his aura into electricity without having to do this. I know he taught himself it by tasing himself, but why is he the only person in the series that actually has to do something like this? Like, we've never seen Ahsoka have to, like, eat bubblegum to turn his net into, bu into bubblegum or any his bungee gum or anything like that. But, regardless, he sends Meliorwan away to go help uh, Knuckle and Moral, and he basically tells him that he's going to go back to going after he's done charging. Poof! Being the arrogant SOB that he is, 
basically says, why am I not, why are we just sitting here? Why am I not just going to attack this kid? And Pete Dozel is like, you need to stop, please. And even go and just like, just shut up. Stop talking. Poof. He aggravates me. <laughs> we go back over to Yuppie after he's done exploding. And we can actually see that APR is over 50,000. And still ticking. Well, Yuppie kind of has like a breakthrough. And he basically tells himself that he wants to feel that rage again. Because one more time and he's 100% sure you can finally control all that power. And when he's when he you know laments to do this, he actually transforms again, and his body morphs into something completely nuts. He becomes like a centaur type thing, and he jumps at Moral. Um, I'm a little sorry, but I wanted to get more screenshots of this last episode, but it had a lot of subtitles. I don't know why it was. So I watched the dub. I know I'm I'm a heathen. It just makes it easier to absorb because honestly, a lot of times I watch this late at night when I'm half asleep, and sometimes I want to. I'll make sure I get all the details and it's easier than trying to read it while also trying to do other things. I'm sorry. But this, for some reason, had subtitles. So I tried to get pictures without the subtitles because they look better. But he jumps at Moral. Moral is, like, trying to get away. He still... Moral gets out of the crater and Yuppie just rushes through all of Moral's clones, uh, all of his small puppets, except he knows exactly where Moral is the whole time and he literally just leaves him. He's just like... I don't even care. And we see we see APR still ticking up. By the time he's done, APR is well over five, I think five hundred thousand. He comes out he comes out of the hole. He approaches the now exhausted moral who literally has nothing left and tells him something nobody saw coming. He tells him that they are amazing. That, you know, they all fought. He doesn't say it, but obviously what he means is their conviction, their fighting styles, everything they did to try and combat the superior opponent. They earned Yuppie's respect. And Yuppie says that because you're so amazing, I should kill you now. I mean, we, he, they don't, again, they don't flat out say Again, they don't flat out say it, but it's obvious that he thinks they, would, they could be a threat down the line. Well, as soon as he goes and swings at, uh, at Moral, Moral disappears. But there's blood all over Yuppie's blade. Yuppie realizes it's not someone that can teleport, because otherwise he wouldn't have been able to, to, you know, hurt the person. It must be someone who could turn invisible. Well, even though Melioron has moral, there's a blood trail because he has a giant wound in his back. And trying to save them, Knuckle steps out. And Knuckle was supposed to stay hitting because APR only had, I think they said, three minutes and fifty seconds left, and Yuppie would be all done. But he couldn't risk Moral getting killed. So he jumps out and he tries to plead with Yuppie because of what Yuppie said. He's like, please show him mercy. And Yuppie says, no. Even though Knuckle says, you can fight me now, you can kill me, just let him live. He's just like, that's not a fair trade. I'm not doing it. But, but, if you dispel this and he points to APR, I will let it. Uh, he's like, I, you dispel this and we can talk. And he's like, I know you've been dodging on this this entire time. So, that's the deal. And Moral tries to beg and plead for Knuckle to not do it, to just let him die. Melioron even lets him go, so that way he appears and he try he again tries to plead to Knuckle. And Knuckle just can't do it. Yuppie goes to, to, to deliver the final blow and Knuckle just dispels APR. And it was honestly a really, really crazy scene because... Knuckle then tells Yuppie to come fight him, and Yuppie jumps over Knuckle, and just like, nah. He's like, I don't want to. I don't feel the need to fight you guys anymore. He's like, if you guys want to come at me, come at me, but I can kill you at any time. And then Yuppie says the coolest freaking line he's ever had, and probably the most intelligent line he's had. And he says, fight me anytime, and when you do, we will fight each other as equals. And that blew my mind. That touched Knuckle. Like, Moral gets mad at Knuckle for saving him. And Moral tells Knuckle to just go after him. He said, fight him anytime, go fight him now. And Knuckle says, I can't do it. He is not just something we're going to exterminate anymore. He let us live. He showed us respect. He is not a bad guy. And in reality, he's not. He's just following his orders to protect the king. It's literally ingrained into his DNA. But now he's learned what it feels like to show somebody respect. And then this happens. 
They're trying to get they're trying to get Moral out, get him to a doctor before he dies. Moral's pissed. He thinks they're just gonna they need to go after the Royal Guard. And we find out who actually saved Shoot. It was Nove. So my guess was right. Except Nove is looking awful. Looking at him now compared to the way he looked at the beginning of the season, it's like night and day. And all from seeing Poof's end. And that's crazy to me. He ends up taking Moral away and basically asks Knuckle and Melion if they want to come too because he doesn't know if he's going to be able to come back because he's in rough shape. But shoots alive, Moral's going to survive. They decide to stay to go help with the other Royal Guards. And that's where episode 121 ends. So we've got Shoot and Moral all getting patched up. Kilwa charging up, going back to Gon. Knuckle and Meliorn get ready to fight more of the Royal Guards. And one thing I missed with the whole Pito exchange, sorry, is that Gon ends up telling Poof to stop talking. Poof's like, fine, you don't need me here. You can handle him. I'm going to leave. And Gon's just like, no, you're going to stay right there. And eventually, after you know some quick thoughts, Poof decides to stay. He's like, fine, I'll stay right here. We'll move from the spot. But in exchange, I want to know what happened here. Because he can't understand why Pito is acting the way he is. Pito's not his normal, you know, smile, act kind of crazy stuff. He is terrified for this girl that he's trying to save. And he basically, you know, in his mind is trying to convey what he wants to say to Pito. And it's just like, please catch this. Tell me what happened. Tell me where the king is. Make it subtle and make it sound natural. And Pito catches the hint. So that's another interaction that I'm really excited to see. But that's the end of this review, guys. <sighs> the fight with Yuppie is finally done. I don't know how many episodes we have left until Netero and Merum get into it. But it looks like the majority of the fighting is done. And I'm ready for this climax. <laughs> but that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for sticking with me. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.